All right, back in the basement again today to talk deadlift bars. Now here in my gun rack, I have three examples I'm gonna talk about. So I have the Rogue Ohio deadlift bar in black zinc. I have the iSell Fitness deadlift bar or ISF deadlift bar in bare steel. And I have the Texas deadlift bar in white Cerakote. Now all three of these bars are great. There's a reason why I'm keeping all of them. However, I do get asked the question all the time, which is the best deadlift bar to get? Because realistically speaking, you're probably only going to buy one. And for my money, that would be the Texas deadlift bar. That's the one that I say is the best deadlift bar available. But that doesn't mean it's the right bar for you necessarily. Now, the basics of a deadlift bar, all three kind of meet the criteria, right? 27 millimeters, so it's a thinner shaft, which means it's going to bend or flex more easily and all have extremely aggressive knurling. Now, the Rogue one is kind of more similar to its Ohio Power Bar being more volcanic than the other bars on here, but still really grippy, and I don't have any grip issues with any of these bars. So why do I think that the Texas bar is the best? Well, although each bar here is 27 millimeters, that's not the only thing that contributes to how much whip a deadlift bar has, which again is reason people buy deadlift bars to begin with. They want as much whip as possible the Texas provides for the most. And that is because when you take a look at the distance between where the weights are actually loaded on the collars, it's going to have the greatest area in between, which kind of similar to like an analogy of a diving board, the further out you get from center or where something is balanced, the more bend you're going to have out towards the end. The Texas bar, given that the weights are out further than the other two bars I have here, you're going to get the most whip when maximal weight is loaded. Now to demonstrate that point, I do have a measuring tape and I know just based off of this view you're looking at right now, it might be hard to tell. You might be able to see it if you pixel peep. I'll show you some closer up shots of the actual things lined up. The way I've done this is I've kept all of the rings and the neural marks all in the same area on this side. That way you get the most balanced view. But the easiest way to do this also is by a measuring tape. So let's go collar to collar. So first, the Rogue Ohio deadlift bar, if I can get that on there. So collar to collar, I am looking at on my end, a distance of 59 and a half inches. Pretty impressive, Rogue. Let's move on to the ISF bar. So 59 and a half inches, can we beat that? If I'm not nervous and messing up the old measuring tape here. This one is about 60 and almost a half inches. So almost 60 and a half. So a good amount more than the Rogue bar. And then finally, last but not least, the Texas deadlift bar. I'm getting about 61 and an eighth of an inch. So comparatively speaking, we have quite a difference between the Rogue bar at 59 and a half and the Texas bar at 61 and an eighth. So you're looking at, you know, an inch and three quarters or so more space between, which might not seem like a lot, but Trust me from personal experience, every inch matters, especially when you're busting out the measuring tape. So that's why I think the Texas bar is the best in that regard, because again, people buy deadlift bars to get the most whip out of it. The Texas bar is going to provide that. Now, as mentioned, it doesn't mean it's going to be the best bar for you. Let's take a look at prices really quick. The Ohio deadlift bar in bare steel retails for $330. The iSell Fitness Bar retails for $275 before shipping. And the Texas Bar in Bear Steel, I think is $335, all of which again, before shipping. So price-wise from MSRP, the iSell Fitness Bar is the least expensive. My hesitation to call this the best bar, given the fact that it does sit between the Rogue and the Texas in terms of the distance between the weights, is the fact with the import bars, I've typically found that not all batches are created equal. So while I have a great copy and I love my ISF deadlift bar, it's hard for me to recommend knowing that you might not get the same version that I have. So even though it's the least expensive, that is something that helps me back from saying that this is the best overall bar for most people, which price is usually something I severely base that recommendation on. Now, when it comes to the Rogue bar, although it's priced similar to the deadlift bar from the Texas Power Bar team, the fact that you're giving up basically an inch and three quarters for the same price, I think the Texas bar makes the most sense here. And I also find that most people probably prefer the more aggressive shape of the knurling on the Texas bar 
compared to the volcanic neural that the Rogue Bar provides for. Now, the great news is, again, whatever bar you choose to get with, it's going to be good overall. But if you are asking for the best one, I do believe it's the Texas. All of these bars are available in different types of coating from bare steel to black zinc to e-coat to ceramic to Cerakote. You do really have your options when it comes to this. But for my money, the Texas deadlift bar is where it's at. Now, if I can answer any more questions you may have, Leave them in the comments section below. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.